Friday, September 25th. Below my balcony, I'm wondering how the concrete is going to stop at the edge of the rebar and not flow down the side. Then the crew starts installing this shiny black board, which will act as a threshold when they pour concrete on the roof of the maintenance level. In the middle ground, two compactors are pounding the dirt into submission next to the frame wall. Then they can begin to lay down the yellow moisture barrier and pour concrete. Two workers are climbing around the frame wall tying rebar. This will become another part of the pods that are Mikasa apartments. Closer to the wall on the steel atrium, a worker has been very busy placing pieces of sky deck to create ceiling for the new Mikasa apartments. Wilbur takes to the air and can see just how much was accomplished today by a few of the rebar crew. Almost looks like a solar farm from the air. On the north side by CNM, Wilbur flies over several new frame walls. These will be the external walls for the parking structure. It's exciting to see that they have poured concrete slabs for the floor. Off to his left, Wilbur can see how much progress they've made on the wood shop. Still quiet on the western front for the 23 parking spaces. Wilbur was excited when he heard that the pool at Nueva Vista was open, so he flew up to take a look. Then all of a sudden he remembered he can't wear a mask and drones can't swim. On the travel front, we took a day to visit Taos and saw murals and art galleries. And flowers by the benches? and flowers in every pot around town, and flowers on hooks by the restroom sign. After all those flowers, we drove out to the Taos Gorge Bridge and walked across. It's 650 feet down. When the wind started blowing and the bridge shivered, we walked quickly back to solid ground. Monday, September 28th. Crews work to establish a protective railing around the top of the maintenance level so they could continue to tie rebar safely. I heard a very loud clang near my balcony and looked out to see that Skytrack had delivered more rebar. They continued to tie spiky rebar. It was beginning to look like a fort that boys would build to keep girls out. In the middle ground, the plumbing trenches are being prepped so they can be filled and compacted. Skytrack was tasked with moving a huge stack of sky deck over by the road. As Skytrack was maneuvering to deposit the load, I'll bet you he was thinking, I don't think this is going to fit very well here. Near the steel atrium wall, they worked on sky deck for hours. Looks like he's carrying heavy big black suitcases. Flatbed truck arrived carrying a blue coil covered by red nubby bumps. 
Skytrack unloaded the blue coil. From my balcony, it looked like the largest slinky in town. I'll bet you the driver was still thinking, where am I going to put this? On the north side, I found two workers installing corrugated roofing on what looks like a hallway between the wood shop and the parking structure. At the end of the 4000 building, they are beginning to lay cinder blocks, much as they did by the steel atrium. This wall will be where the new 6000 wing joins to the existing 4000 wing. Near the CNM fence, they are dismantling the frame walls and piling up all the metal parts. On the travel front, we decided to take a day and go up to Red River to go fishing. I watched as our friend Pete made the first snag of a fish. Worked at reeling it in for a little while. Then realized the net was on the other side of the river and reached down to grab it. Succeeded and came up feeling triumphant. This was the first of six fish caught that day. He also found a small drone and controller in the weeds along the river. My friend Terry didn't have to work quite so hard for her fish. Don caught the limit of two fish that day and wrestled them off his hook. I was in charge of holding the big red worms. When they reached in to pull one out and the bunch started roiling around, I almost dropped it in the creek. I sunburned my feet that day. I guess you might even be jealous you don't have stripes on your feet like this. Gene Terrio speaking. This is September the 30th, Wednesday, at, I don't know, 11 o'clock in the morning. We're looking down on the new independent living building site. We see the concrete they poured last week, and it looks like they're ready to pour some more on Friday of this week. They normally pour on Fridays. And they may also pour in this new wall. They have the frame wall up for it. We're sort of following the path of the, the roadway around this new building. They had a big hole where this wet spot is uh, yesterday, and uh, I don't know what they were digging about, but it's been closed in now. And now coming up, we see the extension to the cooling tower area and the other room that they added to that office building and the new... Uh, workshop, as well as the wall that they're building up against the 4000 building. We're now looking over at the parking lot that they're building near the sculpture garden. I say that they're building. They haven't done anything for two or three weeks now, and it still looks the same. I just thought I would document that today. Oh, there's a big flock of birds that just flew between Wilbur and the ground. We're now over at the new assisted living slash Mikasa building. Looking down here, they're bringing some of these dark blue tables across uh, the, across this concrete area. I'll mention that in a second. Now we're uh, flying over the the area where they have the sky deck. And this building that used to be green is now some kind of a ugly mustard yellow. At least it's ugly to me. Looking down on the new room that they built, and then back to the yellow building with the big trench in front. Today, we get to see that they have a whole bunch of 
pipes in that trench and later today it'll get closed closed up well back to those uh, blue cables that we saw on the concrete area at the far end of this building I understand these will be tension rods that they will use to pre-stress the concrete flooring to make it stronger concrete is much stronger in compression than it is in tension that's it Thursday October 1st for past several days anything to do with rebar has been the focus on top of the maintenance level these three work together to spread long pieces of rebar so the next crew can come along and tie it into a grid. Easier to see the shape when it isn't full of bodies and activity. In the top corner, gray will not be filled with concrete as that will become the opening for the stairwell. Skytrack has been regularly delivering rebar. This batch seems to weigh a hundred pounds more than the guy wrestling it. The big blue slinky is in fact separate loops which open up into tension cables. Red toggle end is attached to the rebar. Cable runs across the base and goes out a tube. When concrete is poured, it can be tightened on the outside. Many more tension cables are strung throughout the remainder of the day. Skytrack arrives to pick up a large container of sky deck pieces. The little man just keeps piling them on. In the middle ground, Little Yellow Cat is digging footings which will become the concrete walls for Mikasa Apartments. Rebar Crew is weaving long pieces of rebar top to bottom and side to side, a lot like a placemat in Home Ec. On the sky deck by the atrium, my photo ham is waving his arms again. When the atrium was lime green from the fire retardant board, people complained it almost burned out their retinas. This waterproofing mustard color doesn't make people very happy, although the cat thinks it's a pretty good color. The stucco will be the color of the original building. On the north side, the wood shop continues to take shape. Sky deck is being laid starting at the 4000 building and working its way east. Second quadrant of concrete has been poured in the floor of the parking structure. On the north edge, most of the frame walls have been taken down. One more remains at the corner of the parking structure. He's back. The big pumper truck is trying to get the arm centered over the project, but the wind isn't helping. We've seen concrete poured many times before, but this crew member has to scramble over the scaffolding to the other side and grab the yellow tube to be able to fill that frame wall also. On the travel front, driving around the dirt roads in Angel Fire becomes a messy proposition for a white car. Yet we really think it's worth it when we came across eight fawns just grazing in a neighborhood near our hotel. This old pickup with the Wilson's name on the window made a cheerful greeting out front of their cabin. When we rode the chairlift up to the top of the peak in Angel Fire, 
you could see the bike trails crisscrossing back and forth below us. It was a really busy day. One chairlift carried the people. Next lift carried their mountain bikes. It went on like this all day. Riding down off Agua Fria Peak from 10,677 feet, you had a lot of time to enjoy the panorama. Today's smile is compliments of Ruth Ogawa. This is her great nephew, James. He spends a lot of time chatting up his twin brother, Jacob. Aren't they just beautiful? Mm -hmm.